what's going on everybody it is your favorite auntie mo and we are back for another episode review of black ink crew compton this is season one episode nine yahweh or the highway hmm. Hallelujah. Before we get into the review, if you have not done so just yet, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think about this video with a thumbs up or thumbs down, and then hit that notification bell so you will know whenever I upload new content. If you are new to my channel, welcome. Don't leave without letting your auntie know that you stopped by, and if you are a returning subscriber, what's going on, man? Show sure enough, appreciate you coming back. Did you miss your auntie? Huh? Auntie show enough miss you. Y'all, this Black Ink Crew Compton, <laughs> this new Compton is just trashy trash, y'all. I'm sorry. I mean, it's not trashy trash, but it's just, <laughs> y'all been getting these reviews late because the shows have been boring to me, y'all. I'm sorry they have been boring, but I'm still going to come with a little action for you guys to keep y'all entertained. I hope y'all are ready for the review because I'm ready to give it to you. So let's get right on up into it. All right, y'all. So it starts off in the shop. It's Voodoo, Nessie, Ink Dripping, and Alana, right? They all sitting around clowning on Voodoo. This happened. I slipped on some water and broke her arm. I don't know if she slipped in the shower or what, but I can attest. I damn near slipped in the shower and lost my life before. Seen all 39 years uh, splash before me. I slipped on some soap. Baby, when I fell, the whole shower came down with me. And when I slipped, I slipped like this. So my feet went over my head. I feel her. I damn near died before. But she said she just slipped on some water randomly and broke her damn arm. Poor little old Tink Tink. You know she ain't but this big. Probably weigh 89 cents. Dripping wet with some damn steel toe boots on. Anyways, they out there uh, shopping. They chilling. Tim and KP walk in. And they had, <laughs> you know the ugly ass poster that Tim made a KP with him like, that they put on the side of the building when it was supposed to be a big ass billboard, right? So they done got the poster girl, put the poster on the inside, and then just went all over the poster. Put all of their pictures on there, then drew KP an extra eye so he could see all the goddamn help that he got. And they renamed it Team Content. I thought that was funny. KP, that's what your big head ass get. But they ended up talking about the night before when Barbie came in there and basically ruined their party. When she came in, because you know they happened and stole the furniture before. Then she gonna came back in the dog on party like she owned the place, as Tim said. Talking about we need to beef up the security around here. Tim, with your big scoop ball head ass, you can protect everybody in there. You and that bubble butt that you got back there. Everybody will be fine. But Nessie feels like maybe Barbie feels some kind of way because she stuck up for Alana. Because you remember when she came in the party, she got all up in Alana's face. True enough, Alana did say to her, what you gonna do? You gonna punch me in the face again? Well, she should have just shut up and just, you know, sat back and let Barbie be Barbie because she was pretty much digging her own grave. But they were saying, you know, KP is like, Barbie been my home girl, but from this point on, you know, I don't wash my hands of her. It is what it is. She can't be coming up in here with this negativity, thinking she can just do whatever she want to do, talk to anybody any kind of way that she want to talk to them, just get away with it. And you know what's bad? I like Barbie. But after this whole incident with Big Bear, she just don't seem like the type that can recognize when she's wrong and apologize when she's wrong. So I still like Barbie, though. I got hope for her. I got hope for Barbie, y'all. But KP said, um, homegirl, she's not allowed back in the shop. Look, y'all hear that? Y'all don't hear that. My son got this punching bag. And I've been getting on his ass. Like, look here, when you want to take out some aggression, you going on that punching bag. So now he just punches just because he likes to punch it. You know? Better than him punching one of these kids. Y'all, so Lemire took his mama to get some pedicures. Him and his mama. Lemire and his mama are twins. He looks exactly like his mama. Y'all know Lemire got this little baby face in this right here about him. He gets that from his mama. They are twins, and mama is so cute. Mama's riding for Danielle. I like mama already. She like, look here, what's up with you and Danielle? When y'all get married? He's basically trying to butter his mother up because when a baby come, they know they're going to need some help. So he's like, I'm trying to get these free babysitting services in right now. So let me go ahead and get her a little pedicure to make her feel good about herself. Now they were talking about, you know, how much he loves Danielle, how he wants to spend the rest of his life with her. How when he first got with Danielle, he said that he was in his playaways. So he just wanted to hit it and quit it and see how many females he could get. But Danielle put them grippers on him 
and uh, he couldn't let go. So he said after the third time of him cheating on her, she finally said to hell with it. She left his ass. Mama said he was moping around the house, didn't want to wash his ass, didn't want to wash his dreads, none of that. He said he went out to Louis Vuitton, bought her a $2,000 pocketbook, and she wouldn't take it. Mama said after that, I knew she was the one for you. I was like, yes, go girl. Now, me personally, I'm going to take that damn pocket because that's the least that you owe to me. But I still don't want nothing to do with your ass. But thank you for the pocket because I sure did need a new damn new one, okay? But he says he loves Danielle. He knows that he wants to marry her. But mama wants to be involved in the proposal. Mama wants to be involved from the everything. She couldn't be a part of the whole conceiving of the baby. And she probably ain't going to be there during delivery. But she wants to be there through the marriage from the very jump. I love him and his mother's relationship. It's really, really cute, right? So later on, Lemire ends up taking Danielle to like this spiritual house. Where they get like this spiritual cleansing over them. There was a woman singing a blessing song. And it was just like she was doing rose petals. It was a bunch of zen. Like, I'm your whore and get killed. It was a bunch of that or whatever, right? And so they just prayed over the baby. And... Just talked about where they want to be in their relationship. I think it is so cute. Now, Danielle irks my nerves. But the way she loves Lemire and Lemire love her, their relationship is beautiful. It's beautiful. I love their love. I wish them nothing but the best. That baby is going to be born, raised in love because Lemire is so happy. So happy. I love the way he loves her. Y'all can say whatever y'all want to say about Danielle, but I can say this. The more and more I'm watching this, the more she's starting to grow on me. And like I said, I just love how her and Lemire's relationship is. It's a beautiful thing. Black love, baby, cheers to it. I'm all here for it. But they were looking confused as hell when they were at that spiritual house because the lady was singing that song and I was even like, I hope she ain't put no roots on them, but she said it was a blessing song. So hopefully that blesses their lives and that blesses the baby and that, you know, blesses and all prosperity and all of that shit that come with it, you know? Y'all, so everybody at the shop chilling right now. Alana saying how she wants to get her BBL. Look here, Alana, I ain't even mad at you. I ain't mad at you, girl. If your auntie run into a couple thousands that she got to spare, I might go and get a little lift, nip, tuck my dog on self. That's just me, though. That's just my business, though. But the producers end up coming in, and they pull Voodoo to the side. Now, they show her this package, and you can see her through the window looking like she looked really upset. So Nessie went there to check on her to find out what was going on. Come to find out, her stepdaddy, the leader of a cult, done sent her some kind of letter basically saying like, um, greetings to you, Yahweh. Now, Yahweh is Voodoo's legal name. That's a beautiful name. Yahweh be praised. I love it. But it said like, your mother and I didn't raise you to um, to believe that a man won't buy the cow when he can get the milk for free, close your legs and open your ring hand and re-raise you to be superior to your peers. Just a bunch of weird, weird stuff. And of course, Voodoo was freaking out. She's like, I left these fools nine years ago. Like, how did they even find me? Well, of course, baby, you're on TV, baby. They gonna find you. Even though they might not have no TVs in the compound, he watches some dog on TV. I can, I can promise you that. So she's freaked out. Everybody's freaked out. Now she basically has to tell everybody that, you know, I was raising this cult. This is what went on with this. And, you know, she's terrified. It messed her whole psyche up now. And then she feels embarrassed. She's like, this is what I had to go through with this man growing up. And now for this to be here again in my face when I tried to escape this, I felt bad for Voodoo. I really, I really hope this ain't for TV. If this is something that she really went through and is still going through now, baby, boo. Girl, I understand why you want to be wild and free and let your flag fly because of all of that that you had to go through. So later on, she, you know, she's MIA for a day or so. They, um, Nessie was saying that they're trying to get in contact with her. They couldn't get in contact with her, so Nessie was worried about it. Nessie went over there to the house. Baby, she looking a hot damn mess. She been drinking up all this damn brown and clear liquor. Her mascara all the way down to her cheeks. Her wig is cocked to the side like a pistol. Baby, she looking a hot dog on mess. She said this whole thing messed her up. She tried to save face in front of them like it wasn't a big deal. But it has really messed her up. And it took her back to a place that she didn't want to go to. So, I'm hoping, um, like I said, I hope this is... This ain't something that it made up for a storyline. If this is for real and true voodoo, girl, my prayers go out to you. I couldn't imagine what it was like growing up in a house 
that has anything to, to do with that. In the next episode, I'm kind of jumping ahead, but in the next episode, she actually flies to Washington because she's going to try to go and meet up with her siblings that are still back there at the house, at the compound, or whatever the hell they at, y'all. It's a hot dog on mess. A hot mess. Y'all, so Nessie meets with Barbie. Now, again, I like Barbie, but Barbie. Okay, so Nessie's painting a mural, right? Barbie walks up, and she walked in, quite honestly. She walked in on some bullshit. Had her hands in her pocket like she was ready to go off. And so Nessie's like, I've been trying to call you. You ain't returned none of my calls. My text's like, what's going on? Barbie's thing is like, you are not a real friend to me. She said, when all that stuff was going down, everybody was there to jump in for voodoo and to stick up for voodoo. But when it came to me, I'd have thought you of all people would have had my back. Nessie's like, look here, we were all pissed off. We all had our stuff locked in there. You decided to start throwing stuff in the fire. Then you decided to call the cops on yourself. And you decided to tell the cops what you did. At that point, it's out of my control. What you expect me to do? Barbie's like, you should have been a real friend. You wasn't no real friend. I don't know how y'all do it, where y'all from. But here, you your friend to the end. So, bitch, if we ride together, we die together? We, You go to jail, I go to jail with you? Excuse me? You did that. You messed that up. I can understand if this was something that we both did. We both had an equal part in it, but no. You started burning up shit. You threw rocks through the windows, and you caught the cops. All of that was a big no-no. So, Nessie's trying to let her know, look here, girl. We ain't got to be cool if you don't want to be cool, but just understand this. I did have your back. Whatever happened after that, you made that happen because that was your own misunderstanding. Barbie didn't want to hear it. This heifer went and grabbed a can of spray paint, went over there and proceeded to spray over Nessie's mural. Baby, Nessie swung, it was a swing and a miss. Had she connected with her, that would have been goody for Barbie because she should not have done that. I'm sorry, I don't feel like she shouldn't have done that. I understand you upset. I understand that you felt like that was your homegirl. She didn't have your back, but at the same time, you were wrong. And she should have been able to accept where she messed up in that, but she couldn't. So y'all, they got into a little scuffle. The security guards were there to quickly break it up. But like that friendship ended on Barbie. I'm sorry it ended on Barbie. You know, y'all can think what y'all want to think, but Barbie messed that up. Y'all, I mean, let's have a healthy debate if you don't feel like Barbie did anything wrong and Nessie was in it wrong. Let's have a healthy debate about that. But if you agree with me, give me a thumbs up on this because Barbie, that was wrong. That was your homegirl. And I can understand you upset with her, but at, at the very least, you could have returned her text message been like, look, I'm feeling some kind of way and I talk to you when I'm ready to talk to you. But to just kind of throw her off and be like, you did this, you did that, you the reason I went to jail. Girl, excuse me? So y'all, Barbie later on ends up going to her granny house. Now she knows she was raised by her granny because her mama wasn't in the picture. She let her granny know about what happened, how she got into it with KP and a couple of her coworkers, how she got arrested, how she got fired. And her grandmama already know, baby, that's because your temper, you get that from your mama. Her granny said, you didn't get that from my side, you get that shit from your mama. And you know that's something you need to work on. It took Barbie talking to her granny for her granny to make her realize that she was wrong. Granny's got a way of putting that out of me because my Nana was the same way. My Nana could talk to me if I was wrong and let me know that I was wrong and make me feel guilty as hell. But this is the thing. Barbie, you took it far. Even if you're going to apologize to KP, KP, you going to let her come back in the shop? Like, ain't nobody else going to want to work around her, but she still needs to apologize because what she did was wrong. She still needs to apologize and make amends from that. But again, baby girl... They're not going to let you back up in the shop because of the way that you was acting. I'm just saying, or I'm just saying. So, y'all, I don't know if she's going to go and apologize to KP later on. But still, like I said, she can't come back in the shop. You ain't loud around here. Just because you done caused all this damage and all this goddamn ruckus, you ain't loud around here. Ain't dripping meats with his baby sister, right? Now, you know, baby sis and little brother want him to talk with his daddy. Now, baby sis was a baby when daddy went and chose drugs over them. Ink was nine years old when he said he had to step up and he had to be a father to his little sister and his little brother because daddy chose crack and drugs over them. He said, you a baby, you don't remember when you was in the back seat and I had to whip you up a bottle. I had to stay awake while mama got a few hours of sleep because I had to make sure when nobody come run up, sit a little clothes, little food that we had. I had to be a man at nine years old. I had to be a father at nine years old. 
that ain't right. And because of that, he's holding on to his grudge. Now, baby sister may in, uh, in cry a little bit because she, you know, thanked him for basically being her father and stepping up and doing what her father couldn't do. You know what I'm saying? But Ink's whole thing is right now, I'm not in the mood to meet homeboy. I don't want to talk to homeboy. I'm in my feelings. Like, that's good that y'all got a relationship with him. That's great. But as for me and mine... I'm not ready to go there with him. And you know what, Ink? That made me like you a little bit more. You a good-ass big brother for stepping in and being a man like that. If you ain't already a daddy, salute to you because you're going to be a bomb-ass daddy. So, y'all, they get back to the shop. Everybody in there sitting and chilling. Nessie come in on 10. Nessie is pissed because it's the day after her and Barbie got into it. Everybody like, what's going on? She said, nothing, but Barbie got me messed up. They, She told them about how Barbie painted over her, her mural and how they got into a fist fight, right? And that's the part when Tim said that they needed to amp up the security there. Now, this guy ended up coming in, and he got a tattoo of his dog on his leg. I mean, it is what it is, you know. <laughs> the tattoo looked like a picture. It didn't look like a portrait. Again, it wasn't bad. It was not bad. It was nice. But I... I don't know, maybe it, it needed some around it because it was just the face of the dog. And so it just looked kind of floating there, like it was just there. But like I said, it wasn't bad. I would just have liked to see more added to it other than just the face of the dog. But homeboy was happy with it. All that matter is the customers happy. Hey, everybody happy. That's all that matter. Y'all so they back at the shop and they chilling, right? Next thing you know... KP, no, Tim had ordered some new equipment for the shop, right? And there was a bunch of boxes there. They opened them up and they seen all the equipment that they had. They noticed some other boxes that were there. They opened it up and it was a, I don't know if you pronounce it, holy, a woolly Bible, but it was spelled W-H-O-L-L-Y, like woolly, woolly Bible. This was Voodoo's daddy that sent his version of the Bible to the shop, sent copies of it and everything. KP and them open it up, baby. It was animalism in there. It was all kind of freaky deaky mess going on up in there. People having relations with animals, with Satan, all kinds of crazy ass stuff right now. They looking at this like, dang, this is the stuff that Voodoo was raised on. No wonder why she crazy. Next thing you know, Nessie and Voodoo walk in. Voodoo just took a glimpse from across the room and she automatically knew what it was. I th if y'all, I sincerely hope they are not doing this for TV because if this is what Voodoo really went through, baby, ooh, I just want to hug you because I can't even imagine what it was that she went through. Voodoo said that was basically the pages of her child or her childhood all right there in that book. Like that's scary as hell. So Nessie and them help her take that out to the back child. They trying to set it on fire, setting it on fire. It wasn't even damn light. They ain't nothing but Satan. They ain't nothing but the devil. They ain't nothing but the doggone devil. So Tim went and got some tequila. Finally, they poured the tequila on the Woolly Bibles and they set ablaze. Y'all, that was really weird. Really weird. And I feel bad for Voodoo Dog because like she said, I've been trying to get away for nine years. Now that I've been away, now he's trying to find me. Like, y'all, that's crazy as hell, y'all. The episode ended from there. Like I said, on the next episode, she's going to Washington because she's going to meet with her siblings. It's something weird that happens. I don't know what happened with it, but it looks like, like they all are trying to get her or some kind of way. It just, shit didn't look right. Didn't look right at all. But y'all, if there was anything that I missed out that I forgot to comment on, please don't forget to put it down below and let me know. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Your auntie is fresh out of wine. <laughs> and Auntie Mo will see y'all in the next video. Peace out. What's up, y'all? Do me a favor and share the video. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think and um, hit that notification button so you will be up to date when I upload my latest videos. I holla.